What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and it's been a hot minute since I've done one of these analysis videos. Because of COVID, uh, I've been focusing more on this interview style, but I'm ready to get back into analyzing some of the things that you all watching care most about. And one of the topics that I think is most anticipated over the next couple of months is this Tesla battery day. What is Tesla going to introduce? It's been, it's been pumped up and talked up a lot about by Elon Musk, but why is it significant? Well, this video is going to cover some of my predictions, some of the things that I think Tesla will announce at this battery day. To sum it all up, I think it's going to be very significant for not only Tesla, but the automotive industry and the future of electric vehicles. So let's go ahead and jump in. If you're familiar with Tesla, you know that they've had these secret master plans that they've periodically introduced to outline their strategy for future product development and future iterations of the company. And what I think this battery day will consist of is a, an addition, an amendment to this master plan, this strategy for where Tesla will head in the near future. And I think that this will be an introduction to a master plan part trois or part three. Let me go through part one and two so I can set this up properly. Master plan part one was to create a low volume car which would necessarily be expensive. Use that money to develop a medium volume car at lower price. Use that money to create an affordable high volume car. And as you know, they have been successful at executing on this. Elon Musk added to this master plan with a part two stating, create stunning solar roofs with seamlessly integrated battery storage. Expand the electric vehicle product line to address all major segments. Develop a self-driving capability that is 10x safer than manual via massive fleet learning. And enable your car to make money for you when you aren't using it. And though they haven't introduced these products in full, they're certainly on their way to introducing most of these with the largest one being this full autonomy or autonomous vehicle, which Elon says that it will be feature complete by the end of this year. As, as, a, as a critic, as someone who's skeptical of Elon's timelines, I'm still holding my breath for if this happens in 2020, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm confident that they're iterating and improving on the product, that's for certain, but will it be feature complete by the end of 2020? We'll see. But now that they've got these things in motion for master plan one and two, I think that Tesla and Elon Musk are now looking at what is beyond those things. And this battery day, I think, is going to be a roadmap for what is in the future for strategic plans. Let's go ahead and jump into some of the things that I'm predicting Tesla will announce at this battery day. To put it simply, I think Tesla will announce that they have officially and consistently broken the $100 per kilowatt hour price at the cell level. And I think that they want to announce that they are increasing volume production to more than one terawatt hour. How are they going to do this? Well, I think the first thing that they're going to do is talk about how they are going to reduce the battery production cost in a few ways. One is the removal of the wet electrode from the production process. Most of you are probably familiar with this if you know a little bit about Maxwell. That was sort of the secret sauce or one of the secret sauces in their technology. In addition to that, I think that they will continue to implement not only what they've acquired with Maxwell, but also with Hybar, as well as Celion and any other companies that we don't know about yet. Reducing the production process is something that they can do right now today with the companies that they've acquired and the associated technologies. They've been working hand in hand with Panasonic to develop their current battery cells. And I think Tesla wants to take 
take that a step further to control a little bit more of their own destiny and to find more efficient ways to reduce the cost of battery production. The next thing I think they'll introduce is this improvement in energy density and battery longevity through chemistry improvements. We already know that Jeff Don has published some research around a 1 million mile battery. This is well known and you know I can't help but think that, that Tesla has scored really big. Jeff Don and his research team out of Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia is leading the way in terms of lithium battery research and I think they've really got a good one here with this specific battery chemistry that will allow electric vehicles to last longer and be driven longer for each owner as well as this robo taxi network. Now what I'm not sure about is is this research by Jeff Don in connection at all to Maxwell's dry battery electrode? I'm not entirely sure. I'm inclined to say that these two things have been worked on separately just because research takes a while to conclude. But some noteworthy points about the Maxwell dry battery electrode are that it is a 16x production capacity increase and a 10 to 20% cost reduction. We've heard very little commentary around how Tesla will implement Maxwell's technology, but I have been able to have some off the record conversations with some Maxwell shareholders, or at least they were Maxwell shareholders, and they've since converted those shares into Tesla shares. And uh, this person in particular has had direct communication with some of the executive team at Maxwell before this acquisition happened. And it is a significant technology, and as I understand it, Tesla really was the only company to be able to take Maxwell's technology and accelerate it, put the gas on the fire, and really make it what Maxwell had envisioned it to be and how they envisioned it to be used. The next element to this battery day that I think Tesla will announce is a more integrated approach with battery recycling for reuse of the raw materials that they spend a lot of money trying to extract from the ground and process and put into their battery cells. Some of you may know that J.B. Straubel, one of the co-founders of Tesla and former CTO of the company, founded this ancillary company called Redwood Materials, and it's very secretive. There's very little known about the company, but it does appear like the company is focusing on the recycling of something, and many people surmise that it is the recycling of batteries. JB has talked about on previous Tesla earning calls about how important recycling is to their entire strategy. At the annual shareholders meeting that Tesla held in June of 2018, JB said this about recycling. Tesla will absolutely recycle, and we do recycle all of our spent cells, modules, and battery packs. So the discussion about is this waste ending up in landfills is not correct. We would not do that. These are valuable materials. In addition, it's just the right thing to do. We have current partner companies on every major continent where we have cars operating that we work with to do this today. And in addition, we're developing internally more processes and we're doing R&D on how we can improve this recycling process to get more of the active materials back. Ultimately, what we want is a closed loop, right? At the gigafactories that reuse the same recycled materials. There's a few reasons why I think Tesla will partner together with Redwood or either just acquire them outright. The first one is, is that Redwood's address that they've registered with the state of Nevada is about 50 miles away from the Gigafactory in Carson City, Nevada. This is close enough to what Tesla is doing in the Reno area, but not too close to make people suspicious. The other thing that I think is relative to this whole idea that Redwood will be worked into Tesla's entire strategy of driving down the cost of batteries is that they are currently actively hiring for spots and positions at the company. In fact, their full-time position list on their website is the largest that I've seen it in the last three to six months. They've got a whole host of jobs 
for mechanical design engineering, manufacturing engineering, manufacturing operations director, chemical process engineer, R&D scientist, lab technician, automation and controls engineer. These are some specific jobs with specific education requirements. And to do this in Carson City to me is really interesting. I would find it very difficult for a company like Redwood to attract these types of caliber people to Carson City without something more, without a longer, deeper strategy. I think that working recycling into Tesla's process will be a key part of driving down the overall cost of battery cells. The other thing that I've thought about while processing through how important this company is, is we're talking about the co-founder of Tesla, J.B. Straubel, who's departed from Tesla and who's had a major impact on Tesla's technology to date. Why would he do that? Well, you could say that maybe he just had a beef with Elon, maybe he disagreed with Elon's working style, but he'd been at the company for over a decade, almost two decades before he left. I would think that he would need to leave for a really good reason, and I think that the significance of Redwood Materials cannot be understated. At a minimum, I think that Tesla will work directly with Redwood to incorporate recycling into their process, but I've also considered the idea that Tesla should just acquire Redwood materials outright and integrate that back in. Why haven't they done that to date? I'm not sure. I, I do have a loose theory that if Redwood is a separate privately held company versus being immediately integrated or built up inside of Tesla, they have less to report, they're required to report less because Redwood is a private company, Tesla is a public company. And the last prediction that I've got for this battery day is for Tesla to announce a greater control over early stage of the supply chain. More specifically, the extraction of raw materials as well as the processing of raw materials. And as of late, I've spent a lot of time, a great deal of time, talking with people in the industry who know about raw materials like lithium, for example. And this is an area that I think automotive manufacturers really need to focus on. It does appear like from those that know the industry well that in the next couple of years we'll start to see a shortage of raw materials and I think it makes a ton of sense for Tesla to take a look at this now, especially with the ambitions of producing more than a million vehicles here in the near future. Vertical integration of local raw material mining, particularly around lithium, nickel, and cobalt will be fundamental for the future success of Tesla because Tesla cannot sell a vehicle without a battery pack. If you don't have the raw materials for the battery pack, you can't sell the car. If Tesla wants to continue to produce the cars that they make right now, which are the SX3 and Y, they not only have to think about that, but also their future vehicles, particularly the semi-truck, the Cybertruck, as well as the Roadster, and any other vehicles that they intend on creating that they haven't yet announced. How are they going to do that when they've maxed out capacity at the Gigafactory with 35 gigawatt hours? Not only that, but they also have to think about their stationary storage ambitions. This 35 gigawatt hours that they've now tapped out at the Gigafactory with their current volume of vehicles and stationary products is what gets them to where they are right now. How do they execute on ramping up volume of these other vehicles as well as making sure that they're still producing stationary storage? They do this by making sure that they've secured the raw materials to be able to produce the batteries that go in these products. My friend Howard at RK Equity surmises that Tesla could buy Lithium Americas due to existing Tesla ties and the Thacker Pass location. Lithium Americas chief technology offer Dr. Rene LeBlanc actually came from Tesla and a former Tesla executive at a lithium company bodes well for both Lithium Americas as well as Tesla because they've got an existing relationship. Lithium Americas also does business in an indirect way with Tesla already through some Chinese battery makers. 
To make matters more interesting, Thacker Pass is only three hours and 10 minutes drive from the Gigafactory and only an additional hour away from JB Straubel's Redwood Materials in Carson City. Why would Thacker Pass be a strategic move for Tesla? Well, as it stands right now, those raw materials are mined in places like South America, put on a boat, shipped to China where they're processed, and then shipped all the way to Nevada where those processed raw materials are able to be put into batteries. If Tesla is mining raw materials in northern Nevada, they significantly decrease the environmental impact because the raw materials are having to travel less distance. In fact, when I had a chance to talk with the CEO of Piedmont Lithium a few weeks ago, he said that this shipping of raw materials from one continent to another to another is about 30,000 miles in total before it gets put into electric vehicles. If Tesla can reduce the distance, not only will it reduce the environmental impact, which Tesla cares a lot about, but they can also reduce the cost associated with how far those raw materials travel. The other important thing to note here, which I've mentioned in a previous video, is that if you're mining raw materials on the same continent that you're producing vehicles, you're far less likely to see supply chain disruption in one of the most important parts of an electric vehicle, the battery pack. If Tesla can ensure that raw materials are being mined on the same continent, then it decreases the chance that producing vehicles will be disrupted in the event of a major disruption like a pandemic or a war. And then the other thing that really has just become an unpredictable element are these trade wars between America and China. And if they increase, that too will disrupt Tesla's ability to make electric vehicles and get them sold to consumers. Tesla already has an established supply chain in China since 80% or so of raw materials and processing come from China. It would be in Tesla's best interest to have something similar located on the continent of North America. And maybe it's not Lithium Americas, but maybe it's some of these other companies like Piedmont Lithium who have a research facility and processing facility in North Carolina that they can partner together with, or maybe it's both people. But it wouldn't surprise me one bit if Tesla makes a move to acquire a company like Lithium Americas due to the proximity of Thacker Pass. One other strong case to consider about Tesla's interest in controlling that early supply chain around raw materials is actually an executive order that President Trump signed back at the end of 2017, and it has to do with raw materials. This executive order was to ensure secure and reliable supplies around critical minerals. The president instructed the Secretary of the Interior in coordination with the Secretary of Defense to make sure that the United States will further this policy for the benefit of the American people and in a safe and environmentally responsible manner by a identifying new sources of critical minerals as well as increasing activity at all levels of the supply chain including exploration, mining, concentration, separation, alloying, recycling, and reprocessing of critical minerals. Uh, you know, if this does not hit the nail on the head with some of the things that I've already talked about, I don't know what does. This is directly in line with some of Tesla and Elon Musk's strategy to partner together with the U.S. government, leverage federal funds to be able to develop products for the benefit of the environment and the benefit of companies and the consumers that buy the products from Elon Musk's companies. I think that Tesla could leverage federal funding to help with the exploration of raw materials, the extraction processing, as well as the recycling, not only for the benefit of consumers, but he could also leverage this on the defense side, aka the U.S. military. In the near term, I don't think that Tesla will be able to fully get up to mass production of their own battery cells. And that's why I think that you've seen some partnerships, some strategic partnerships with KATL, LG, and Panasonic. I think that they'll continue to build out those third-party suppliers and partners 
as well as continuing to build out this ability to produce their own cells exactly the way that they want. But all of this really means that if Tesla can communicate a clear strategy for the next five to 10 years in terms of how they're going to execute on millions of vehicles as well as stationary storage products, they should have access to raise additional capital if they need to, but also it just creates that next phase, that next iteration of the company. And for enthusiasts and people who follow the electric vehicle industry, we should be really, really excited about this. I'll also mention lastly that this does not just benefit Tesla. If Tesla can continue to drive down the cost of battery cells below the $100 per kilowatt hour at the cell level, this should benefit every single automaker who has electric vehicle intentions. This means that electric vehicles will be more affordable. This also pushes aside the criticism that electric vehicles are only for wealthy people. People who own electric vehicles and who understand them know that this is not true, but one fundamental aspect of mass adoption of electric vehicles is the continual reduction in price of electric vehicles, not only just below 40,000 US dollars, but also below 30,000 and then 20,000 US dollars. So that wraps up my predictions for Tesla's battery day. I'm really looking forward to this. In fact, I would love to be there in person for this. There's rumors that this may be in Texas. Austin's my hometown. It would be a great opportunity for me to see my family again. Uh, and I uh, would love to see a lot of my Tesla enthusiasts, friends, and investors who plan to attend this event as well. What are your thoughts on this video? How correct or how right do you think I'll be? Are there some things that you thought I should have covered in my predictions video? Put them in the comments down below. Please consider liking this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you're new to my channel. Sean Mitchell, all things EV. I'll catch everyone on the next video.